and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and I am the crochet designer slash business strategist here behind A Crafty Concept. In today's video, I'm sharing with you the Instagram live replay from day nine of Crochetmas. Crochetmas is a virtual online party where I go live every day on Instagram for the first 10 days of December and make one of the free crochet patterns off of my blog that would make an excellent Christmas gift or a product for you to market to your ideal customer as an excellent Christmas gift. In today's video, we are making crafty loop earrings. These are so simple, like 10 minutes, done. Perfect gift, perfect thing to sell, high profit margins because they're so dang fast and they use such cheap little materials. But wait, there's more. Crafty loop earrings also make really nice keychains, crafty loop keychains. You can take this exact same pattern and make it faster by adding a keychain hardware instead of the earring hardware. But another thing about the keychains is they make really good throw in thank you gifts because it costs almost nothing to make them. Like really good thank you gifts to send to your customers when they buy like so much from you. Like you could set your own monetary value, like a $30 purchase or a $50 purchase comes with a free keychain. With this pattern comes a freebie. The freebie is for the earrings, but you can get product tags to help you display and market your crafty loop earrings at your next craft show or as packaging for your Etsy order so they're not wallowing around. There's a place to hole punch so the little earring bits can go into the paper or you can hole punch the top of the tag and hang it on like a board or a hook or something like that at markets to easily display your earrings. This freebie was designed by the most talented Anna of A Naughty Boss. You can find information to her Instagram and her Etsy shop down below. And if you are not on the Crochet Miss email list and you did not receive this free product tags sheet, you can go to the Crafty Loop Earring blog post and sign up there to receive the sheet for free. As always, all the links to all the things is gonna be in the description below. Now, without further ado, let's head on over and watch the Instagram Live replay here together. This is the second to last day of Crochet Miss 2022. We have one more after this, and then we're gonna have to wait an entire year for Crochet Miss 2023. Hello friends, welcome, welcome back to Crochet Miss. Today is day nine. That means we have today and tomorrow left together to do Crochet Miss here on camera on Instagram and have this little virtual fun party and then it is over, but we will do it again next year because this is just too much fun not to continue to do every year. Next year it will be even better because I've got some new ideas. I learn things as I go. So get excited for next year and let that overpower your sadness for this year, okay? All positive things. Let's go ahead and quickly go over all of the things we have made so far. I am running out of space on my screen. So we have made Bitty Boho Stockings, Bubble Bugs, Little Christmas Lights, Claire Cozies, Crafty Facial Rounds, Claire Bun Beanies, Bitty Boho Bags, and yesterday we made the essential oils keychain holding situation. I went ahead and add, added, added? I went ahead and added my chain hardware situation. I did not sew in my tails, but I hit them and I put my button on so you guys could see what it looks like. Still obsessed with this color, still obsessed with this yarn. Good news, I got day sixes um, replay available on YouTube. So you can now watch the second footage if you haven't seen that, the um, second never before seen footage of my second camera that is on youtube there is also spanish subtitles that is ready to go i will be getting day seven's replay ready to go today as well it's already uploaded i just have to add all the things and then make it public and i will also be releasing a new video today that is not crochet miss related is just business as usual a friday video and it is about something that happened to me the other day in my etsy shop i received a specific order from a specific stranger and i did all kinds of things because of that so if you want to check out that oh welcome australia sorry it's so early um if you want to check out that video it will be live on my youtube and blog a couple hours after we do this. So probably around like, let's say two o'clock. It'll probably go live around two o'clock. But I will be sending an email so you don't have to worry about forgetting and I will also be posting on Instagram. Okay, today we are making crafty facial rounds. Just kidding, that's what this is. And I was looking at it and using my words. Today we are making crafty loop earrings. These things are so dang fast. 
If you have never made them before, let me give you a disclaimer. You might very well get addicted to making them because they are fast. They are cute. Watching the different types of yarn come together is just addicting. And they're very, very cheap to make because you can buy a little baby skein of hand-dyed indie yarn yarn, indie dyed hand darn yarn, whatever, um, yarn that you normally wouldn't buy, you can buy the little mini, or they, I'm sorry, not yarn that you normally wouldn't buy, yarn that you normally would splurge on. That's what I meant. Your splurging yarn, your high, high priced, high quality, supporting small businesses yarn that you would buy. All you need is a mini skein and you can get so many pairs of earrings. So I have this mini skein that I already turned into a ball. I don't even know where it came from. I think I got it from one of the Maker Retreat goodie bags. Sierra used to do Maker Retreats and I went to a couple of them. And I think this came from one of the goodie bags, but I honestly couldn't tell you who it was from or what it was called. But it's got like some terracotta coppery looking vibes inside of it. So I thought it would make really cool earrings. So that is the yarn that I will be using. If you've got any fingering weight yarn in your stash, that you just don't know what to use it you make with it crafty loop earrings or crafty loop keychains is going to be a really good one you're also going to need some rope you can get i like to use cotton rope it's just softer also um pro tip with the cotton you can use it as an essential oil diffuser because you can put essential oils on cotton and then they'll be dangling from your ears so which is close to your nose so you'll be able to smell your essential oils if you're into that or your ideal customer can smell it if they're into that yeah, size two will work too. Any size that you want to do will work. I've made these with a uh, worsted weight too, and they all it all works fine. It just changes the 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 size and the style of the earring a little bit. But these are I'm so glad you can make it, Ivory. These this rope you can get it from Hobby Lobby, you can get it from the Dollar Tree, and you can get it from Walmart. You can get it from Amazon. There's all kinds of different places. There will be links in your email that you got this morning, and there will also be links in the description down below if you're watching the replay on YouTube. You don't need much. You just need enough for the, the length of earring that you want. So if you want your earring to be this short, that's how much you need, times two. I like for mine to be like about like this. So that's where we will be cutting ours. Um, I should probably grab a tape measure and I'm going to grab a tape measure and the giveaway stickers and a keychain thing. Sorry, I did not grab all of that before we started. While I'll do that, I will let you guys be reading over the giveaway rules. We are not doing a giveaway right now, but you can be reading over these rules while I go grab a few things. I want to show you guys the key, the keychains that I use for these and um, grab some giveaway stickers. that's everything that I'll need. I just grabbed my whole little box of keychain bits so we can look at these together. I will show you a very cheap option and I will also show you a little bit more of a classier bougie option if you're into that. Okay, so today we're going to be doing four giveaways, hopefully, if not, maybe just three, but we're going to do these stickers are going to be given away. So somebody will get, we'll do three sticker giveaways today. This is an exclusive an exclusive crochet must only. There's only 10 in the world and I will be keeping one for myself. And then we have a holographic resting stitch face and then a holographic yarn heart, ball heart situation. If you do not win and you want to purchase any of these, they are only $3.55 in my shop. You can get to it through a craftyconcept.com forward slash shop. Sierra will come in hot with the links for you guys and they will also be linked down below in the YouTube des description if you're watching the replay on YouTube. Um, buy three, get one free. That's how the stickers work. So buy six, get two free kind of deal. It's just, it's just good math. We also have a live coupon code that's happening right now that is just for Crochemus, our little Crochemus family that we've got over here. You can get 25, if you spend $25 at Angie and Britt, you can get $5 off if you use the coupon code Crochemus22. Angie and Britt is where I get all of my 
faux suede tags. I really like the fold over ones. We talked about that in detail yesterday and it's at the beginning of the video. So if you want to watch that to get a little bit more information about the faux suede tags, you can go watch yesterday's replay. It is live on Instagram already. It is not live on YouTube at the time of this recording. But this is the coupon code and it's angieandbrit.com. Sierra is coming in hot with all of the details for you guys. You're going to need rope. You are going to need fingering weight yarn or any yarn of your cho choice. I will be using fingering weight yarn. You're going to need earring findings. These are the ones that I use. These are the ones that are linked down below. You're going to need two if you're going to make two earrings. And I also grabbed some jump rings. I usually don't, oh, sorry. I usually don't use jump rings when I make this pattern, but I thought we could try it here and see how it turns out. We might really love it. So um, I went ahead, whoop. I went ahead and added some jump rings. These are optional. You're also gonna need a pair of needle nose tweezers, pliers. These are really helpful for opening up those tiny little jump rings because sometimes my little fingers won't, won't grab a hold of it like this will. Also, pro tip, when you are adding, remember yesterday when I said a tip to add this keychain is to squish in one of those staple removing devices, you can also use needle nose pliers. So I just shoved, like I opened it up with my thumb and then I shoved it in there and then it was really easy to squeeze it on into, into this. So this made it really, really super easy. Can you do that part after the earrings are made? I got to run to Michael's today. Um, do you mean add the hardware? Because yes, I will add the hardware last. The website for the tags, Sierra um, linked it, but she'll link it again for you. It's angieandbrit.com. They are not on Instagram. Just a second. Need to go grab supplies. Take your time. Um, I will say, too, that the email that comes out to you every morning at 8 a.m. has a list of the supplies down at the very bottom of the email. Um, I think a couple people aren't seeing that. So I just wanted to bring it to your attention. It is down at the very bottom of your email. If you are not receiving the Crochet Miss emails, um, check out your spam and junk folders. A lot of Crochet Miss family members have found out that their Crochet Miss emails are piling up in their spam and junk folders. So go check there. You might find them. You're going to have a pile of freebies waiting on you. Speaking of freebies, today's freebie is a product tag for your earrings designed by the lovely most talented Anna of the Naughty Boss. She has a graphic design um background. Like she that graphic design is her is her main job and then she started the Naughty Boss to create tags and and things for the maker community here and we just love her to death for that. Her tags are stellar and gorgeous and you can get them for free by going to a craftyconcept.com forward slash free patterns and then scrolling until you see the earring pattern which I'm doing right now on my iPad acraftyconcept.com okay and then that's going to bring us to the main page and then we're going to click free patterns and then we're going to scroll until we see the crafty loop earrings these are an oldie but goodie so they're going to be down a ways this was one of the funnest patterns. Like, I remember when I designed it, I could not stop making them. I think I made, like, 78. I don't remember if it was pairs of earrings or individual earrings. I want to say pairs because it would be weird to count them by one at a time, but maybe I did do that. Okay, here is the Crafty Loop Earrings blog post. You can also go to this blog post to get the freebie if you weren't on the crochet miss list and you missed today's freebie. Um, after it loads, I'll show you. There's a picture of it here. They're really cute. They're, like, um, little rectangles with a little hump within you hole punch it right there that was my second angle phone <laughs> uh br brb my second angle phone just dropped from the from the heavens okay i have to i have to plug this back up yay yay technology yay real life i am so sorry it just it just dropped down still recording but it dropped down like a mad lady and slid out from under my little makeshift um, tripod situation with my shipping tape. Really fancy over here today. But you know, it's worked every other day, so she's about to do a, a fall down, right? Almost got it. Just gotta duct tape it here to my tripod. <laughs> okay, I can't find one of my, um, my little phone holding clips that I have, and so I have to use tape, and it's shipping tape. And she might fall again, but we're just going to hope for the best. Please don't fall again. Okay. Sorry. Here's what the tags look like. They're gorgeous. 
That is the freebie, okay? Now we are going to, let's start off with a giveaway. So here are the rules. Oh wait, you're also gonna need a comb. That's optional to help you um, brush out your fringe. Okay, here are the rules. You can guess a number one between one, from one and 126. The person to get the closest without going over is the winner. We can only ch only choose what Instagram shows us. So if it is glitchy or if yours doesn't come through, we that's out of our control. Um, I'm going to try to see if there's something better I can do next year. I'm having a hard time coming up with anything, but maybe we will host these lives on YouTube instead of Instagram and maybe Instagram will be, I mean, YouTube will be less glitchy. Who knows? But go ahead and guess one through 126. One guess per giveaway, but you're able to guess at all giveaways, even if you win one. Um, Sierra will find the winner and she will tag her in the bottom and we will know who the winner is. And if you win, I'm going to need this information from you right here. I need it to be very, very specific. And this one's prize is going to be the holographic yarn sticker. That's going to be for this one. You can keep your guesses coming after I type stop in the comments. No more guesses after that will be um, submitted in to win the prize because we have to have a stopping point and then Sierra will scroll through. It is a hard job, you guys. It is a very hard job. And also Instagram sometimes just doesn't show them to us no matter how hard we try. So um, we give lots and lots of grace here. Okay, shuffling and shuffling. Gonna pull one out. Oh, I gotta hit stop. S-T-O-P. Enter. Now I'm going to draw one. Oh, 111. That's fun. 111. That is the giveaway, the first giveaway. We're going to do three more. So don't get, don't get sad. We still got plenty of chances. This one will win the holographic yarn ball sticker. Again, these stickers are available in my Etsy shop for $3.55 free shipping. For U.S. shipping, I think international shipping is like three bucks, maybe, maybe a dollar fifty. I don't remember. Um, but super affordable. It's not like $14. And now we are going to get started making our crafty loop earring. Okay, so the pattern originally calls for a C. I'm going to use a B. I just feel like a B would be would be better. Um, scissors, our cord, our earrings, our pliers, our tapestry needle, and a ruler or a tape measure. I did not grab my tape measure, um, but we can just wing it. It's no big deal. It says first cut two pieces of cotton cord about seven inches long. So that's why you would need the ruler if you are an analytical person and you enjoy the numbers. Yes, May, Maddie Love Designs. Congratulations. If you are an analytical person and you just prefer numbers, um, no big deal. You can measure yours if you would like. I will be eyeballing mine. And you can always make them shorter, right? It's really easy to trim them at the end. And the sharper your scissors, the better. I don't know how sharp these ones are going to do. Oh yeah, that's not, it's not perfect, but it's good enough. The sharper your scissors, the better for this one, because sometimes going through all this cotton cord is a little bit of a task. So I cut my first one and now I'm going to cut my second one, just using my first one as a guide. And we can trim these after we finish making our earrings. So it's no big deal if they're a little bit different. And then I still have all this cord left here where I can make another pair. Um, so, so lots of, lots of very little materials and your materials will last for a very long time. That's the best thing about this. This cord originally was too thick, I think. I think it was two like that. It might've even been three. And then I think it was three actually. And then I just pulled them apart. So you, it, your materials go a really long way, which I really love that. I love crochet patterns like that. After we cut our cord, we are going to start to crochet around them. So we're going to take our first one and I'm just going to lay it flat like that. And I'm going to make a slip knot with my yarn and I'm using this fingering weight yarn. I do not remember where it came from, but it is hand dyed. And I'm going to make a slip knot, making sure to leave a tail long enough for you to sew in. So leave yourself a little bit of a tail and then make a slip knot. I'll do that again a little bit slower, like so. And then just pull it up through there. And now we are going to single crochet around our rope. So put that little slip knot on your hook, leave your tail out of the way and keep your working yarn, the one that we're gonna be using. Don't accidentally use your tail, that's no fun. Now we are going to insert our hook with the yarn on it 
under our rope here. And we're going to go near the middle because we can squish and move our things around later, but it's going to be in the middle ideally. So I'm going to insert, well insert, stick my hook under my rope, and but I have my, my starting yarn already on my hook, right? And then I'm going to kind of hold it all together at the same time. And I'm going to yarn over. I want my stitches to not be twisted. If you've been following along for any amount of time, you noticed that I yarn under, usually. I'm going to yarn over specifically for this because I want them to look a specific way. We are making crafty loop earrings. So I'm going to yarn over and then pull my yarn through this little loop that was created by my rope by holding onto my rope. And then I'm going to yarn over again and pull through both loops on my hook. That is my first single crochet. I turned that setting off. I turned that setting off yesterday and it's still doing it where it swaps lenses. But that is our first single crochet. And we are going to single crochet, I think it's 25. Let me see. Yeah, 25 stitches around the cotton cord. So that's one. So I'm gonna go into, I like to create like that little loop with my, my thumb and my finger here to create a little loop here. I'm gonna go into there again, yarn over, pull my yarn through, yarn over, pull through two to complete the single crochet. Now we have two single crochets on our rope. We're gonna do that until we have 25, and you can do more if you would like. I don't, you could probably get away with doing less, but I'm not for sure how few you can do. So I'm not gonna, look how cool that's already looking with the hand dyed yarn. Can you see how it looks like it's like ombre? Hand dyed yarn is perfect for crafty loop earrings. Yes, fabric scissors would be perfect. Okay, so we're gonna keep going until we have 25 single crochets all the way around our rope. Oh my goodness, this color is gorgeous. I wish I knew which designer made it. I don't even know which retreat it was from. Might not have even been from a retreat, but I think that it was. So if you wanted to do more, your loop would just be like a bigger, taller loop. And I can show you guys that in a minute. Isn't it beautiful? Thank you, Mama Paige. Just, it looks like it's watercolored. Hand dyed yarn in this, with this pattern just kind of looks like it's watercolored. Like it's painted right on there specifically for, okay, so look here. I've got a little bit of a situation. So we don't want that. So I'm gonna, you see how I kind of went through one of the threads of the rope? We don't want that. If that happens to you, you can pull it out of there. So it's not ugly. Like you could just pull that tiny shred all the way through or cut it and pull it. You can get rid of it. But since I caught it, I'm going to redo, like pull that stitch out and redo. So you don't want to go between the threads of your rope. You want to go around your rope, completely around it. That yarn is so beautiful, thank you. It looks really cool. Okay, the rope is still doing that. So you could like get some water and um, kind of dampen it so it will stay together a little bit if it's, if it's giving you fits, but you just gotta keep, and not all rope is treated the same. Some rope is gonna be more finicky than others. Also, the, the hook that you're using is gonna dictate how finicky your rope is. We should be getting close to 25. I'll do one more. And then we will count them. Okay. Good pair of scissors for making pom-poms. Any suggestions? Um, I don't have any specifically, but someone did mention fabric scissors, and that would be really good. Fabric scissors would. So I'm going to make sure I'm on my wide angle lens because that's the one that doesn't flip-flop around. And I'm going to count these little stitches and you can see them you can see the tops of the stitches it's just small one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen almost done seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two
20, 21, hello, 22, ooh, a blue, that's pretty, 22, 23, I will say I like to use an odd number, 24, that way my 25, my finding, my earring finding is in the actual center. Look how cool that looks. It almost looks symmetrical. Oh my gosh. So then we're going to loop it. This is kind of, kind of going to be what it looks like when it's an earring. Very, very cool. So after we do our 25 single crochets, if you wanted to make yours, if you wanted to do more, like say my, my yarn was this far, it would just make your loop bigger and then your fringe is down here. So you can do as much as you want. I don't know how few you can get away with. I mean, you can probably do less than 25 if you wanted to, but also we're gonna do something, we're gonna do this. We're gonna give them a squish. So I'm holding on to the rope and just kind of scooching the stitches together, nice and, and snug. I'm not like doing it as tight as I'll get out, so they're overlapping each other, just nice and snug. So there's no rope in between the stitches. It's all just beautiful, hand-dyed, gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. Now we can tie off, but leave a very long tail because we have to wrap up the bottom. So leave a long tail. I don't know how long, just it's better to have too much than too little, and then you'll get a good gauge after that, and you can kind of guess and estimate closer next time. Let me see if it said to slip stitch or if I just pulled it through. Squish your stitches where they are lined up in the center of your cotton cord. Create, okay, so it says to create your cluster that's about two inches wide. That's for my analytical friends. We're not gonna measure that, but if you if that's your life, you can totally measure that. Fold your cotton in half and knot your two tails together. Okay, did it not say how to end it? Around the cotton cord, tie off, leaving a tail about 12 inches. There you go for my analytical friends. Is there a specific place you usually ordered hand-dyed yarn that you could recommend? I do not, Ivory. Um, my friend, Yarn on the Prairie made some yarn called a Crafty Concept Pink that I'm obsessed with. But other than that, it's just, I mean, Sorella has some hand-dyed stuff. There's a lot of, if you just search hand-dyed yarn on Instagram, hashtag hand-dyed yarn or indie dyer, like you're going to find so many, so many gorgeous, unbelievably beautiful yarns. Also, I did hoard a bunch from Hobby Lobby when they gave their sale uh, kind of recently, so maybe I can make some with that and share that too. So now we are going to, oh yeah, all kinds of all kinds of suggestions coming in. Awesome, thank you. Now we're going to tie off. So I'm just put my back in the my my working yarn loop here, and I'm just going to yarn over and pull through that knot, pull through that loop, creating a knot, and that's how we're going to tie off. Now you want to center your stitches. In, in the middle of your rope, approximately in the middle. So you can see that we're, we're a little off center. So I'm just gonna pull it from this side and kind of squish it, it's almost like a slinky. Kind of squish it on down to the other side and kind of move them around until I'm happy with the placement. Okay, and then we are going to, I like them to be, so the squished, the more spaced out they are from each other, the less smooth your loop is gonna look. So if you if you go to make your loop and you're not loving it, try squishing your stitches together a little bit more. Okay, so now we're gonna give it our loop. Oh, beautiful. So now we are going to tie our tails. Look at this, I'm obsessed. We are going to tie our tails together on the back. So I laid it down flat, I've got my yarn, I've got everything squished up. And now I'm just gonna double knot these together. I am having a brain fart, okay. So I'd like to go under twice, that's one. Oh, sorry, and then again is two. And that just helps your knot stay in place while you're getting ready to do your double knot. It helps it kind of stay. So yeah, I let go when it didn't really move much. It's because I yarned under twice. Okay, so making sure that's nice and tight. And then we're going to double knot it so it stays put. Gorgeous, okay, easy peasy. And all this is on the back. Now we are going to wrap 
the base down here to give it a nice clean look. So I'm gonna take my starting tail and hold it down with my fringe and I'm gonna take my ending tail, which is my longer one, and begin to wrap, and I like to pull from the back. If you pull from the front, your your stitch could kind of like get conky wampus. I like to pull from the back and wrap around the base, around the base of my earring, kind of going up to touch both of those ends really nicely. And then we're gonna come back down to kind of go down the rope a little bit to give it a nice little secure look and clean everything's contained so after we do our wrapping and you can wrap as long or as short as you want after we do our wrapping we're going to knot it again with our two tails together so just like last time just gonna knot it and keep our fringe from getting crazy Pull it tight and do it again so it's double knotted. Now we are going to hide our tails. So obviously look, this is way too much yarn. Better, better to have too much than too little. Okay, um, now we are going, I'm just using a small tapestry needle. I'm gonna use this one and I'm going to sew in my tails. I haven't made one of these in years. I, I'm having fun. I'm having fun. Now I'm gonna go up from the bottom where we, our knot is and then pop it out behind the stitches. Can you guys see it popping out? That's where we are going to hide our tail. So you wanna make sure it doesn't mess up your fringe, like grab a hold of it and pull it through weird. Ta-da! And then I'm just gonna leave that one there for now because I might need to do it again. I'm gonna go ahead and trim this guy because he's way too long. No need to wrestle with extra yarn for no reason. Okay. And then we're gonna hide it. I'm just gonna go where it naturally wants to go. Can you see after I knotted it, it's kind of fall falling to this side. That's what I'm, instead of taking it and making it come over here and go up that way, I'm just gonna go the way it wants to go and go in the direction it's already leaning and go up under all these stitches on the other side, right there, and pull it nice and snug, and it should just kind of hide right under those stitches. Now you could um, go back down. I would be careful not to go around any of your stitches. So go right back in where you just came out of just like that and kind of go right back down in there and, and just come out like where the knots are. Okay. Cause it's getting um, tangled up in your rope. All these different strands of rope is under there and it's getting tangled up in that. So that's helping it. Um, Heather, we're gonna make another one that might be helpful. Also, if you're struggling with the fingering weight, just use a thicker yarn until you get the hang of it. So now I'm going to clip this off as tight as I can so it's not seen at all. Boop. Okay, and then do that other one. Hey guys, guess what? Guess what, I have some news. Do you remember that I shared that little beanie that I made for my best friend? That was due in December. She had her baby last night in Florida. And I can't, I just, I love her so much already. She's like 13 or about 12 hours from me right now. But she is absolutely perfect. She was like six pounds. Such a tiny little thing. Ava was so big. I am already in love with her. Absolutely in love with her. I already saved her birthday into my calendar on my phone so I get a reminder every year and I, I will never forget. I will try to share pictures later if she will permit that. Some people don't want to do that and I will respect her wishes but I will try to share pictures in my story. Oh two December 8 babies. You guys I have never felt this sense of love before. It's a all it's a whole new love for me. Um, this the girl that's the mother is my childhood best friend since preschool. 
Like we have been best friends all of our life. We are both under five feet tall. We both have brown hair. We both have freckles. Like she, we're both Christians. Like she is my soulmate when it comes to, I'm giving myself chill bumps talking about how much I love her. Like I'm literally giving myself chill bumps um, all over my body. Um, But I just, I'm so thrilled. We are so thrilled that she is here now and she is safe. There was some complications, but nothing nothing to be too concerned about. But if you are um, the praying type and would like to say up a prayer, her name is Baby Adeline. Just give her um, well wishes and fast healing prayers. Like, like I said, it's nothing dangerous or life-threatening or scary. It's just uh, not ideal, right? Like you want your baby to come out with absolutely no issues whatsoever. So it's just not ideal. But she is... She is so perfect. I love her so much. I mean, she has my heart. I cannot wait to hold her. I'm literally trying to convince Gabe to let me go to Florida. Like, I wasn't planning on going to Florida. I was just going to visit when they, like, see her when they came back to Kentucky because they come all the time. And now I'm like, please let me go. There's a really good chance that I will go to Florida to see this baby girl and to help take care of my friend. Okay, now that we have finished our little loopy bit, we can start to calm out our fringe. So I'd like to just kind of pull it apart a little bit. Thank you for the prayers. God is good and everything is done for his glory and our good. And we know this and we are not anxious or scared, but um, healing would be great. <laughs> like immediate healing would be great. Okay, so we're going to pull apart all of these little pieces, and then we're going to do the comb, and that's going to make it go a lot faster and smoother. So after we kind of just break it up a little bit, I like to set it on a table and take a tiny tooth comb like this. Look, it's broken. He's a redneck comb because he's missing a tooth. I'm not making fun of red. Like, I live in Kentucky. I know people with missing teeth. I love them dearly. They know this. It's a joke between us. It's totally fine. I'm not being insensitive. It's totally fine. Like if you look up Google for people from Kentucky, you're going to see people with missing teeth show up on Google. I didn't make that up. It's totally fine. But anyway, um, we're going to do this comb. And comb through our fringe to kind of like separate it from each other so it's not so clunky. Redneck comb. <laughs> I am not being offensive. Teeth health is, everybody's journey is different. It is not offensive. It's just a thing that we do and say here in Kentucky that's like a joke. But I am not making fun of anybody. And if you are missing a tooth, you are beautiful and perfect. I had a mouthful of silver teeth as a child. Like, no big deal. Summer teeth. <laughs> Okay, so I and then I just keep flipping it and combing it from the different directions So it's all nice and combed through and then you can also take a straightener Over this fringe if you don't want it to be wavy and I believe it's safer with cotton than it is with the acrylic So it's not it's less of a fire hazard if you want to sh take a straightener or a steamer over your fringe I think it's going to be safer than acrylic yarn, um, but you know definitely Definitely um, ask an adult for help if you are a child and be super mindful if you are an adult. And if you set your house on fire, it's not my fault. Be, you, be, be extra super duper cautious. Take precautions and make sure you don't set your house on fire. Okay. After we, um, so the dental assistant in the house is like, yep, she's right about Kentucky. <laughs> Please put a sticky on the comb that says redneck comb. <laughs> Oh man, I realize most people are laughing and having a good time, but if there's one person silently being sad, please know it was not offensive. It came from a happy, loving heart. I was not being offensive, and your teeth are perfect, and it, it truly doesn't matter what anybody else thinks about your teeth. I'm sorry if that was if that hurt anybody's feelings. Okay, even a little bit. Even if it hurt your, your feelings a little bit, I am deeply sorry, and that was not my heart. It was just a joke for, like living in Kentucky. It's like a Kentucky thing. Um, now we are going to trim our fringe and I like to just, and you also, there's a, there's a pro tip. So if you make a whole bunch of these, which you probably will, cause they're highly addicting. Um, you can take a ruler and so line all your fringe up on like a non-slip mat and then set your ruler over them. And you can take one of those rolly things and just trim them all at the same time. And you are good to go. It helps 
make them all the same length, which is really hard to do. You know what? I'm not going to trim them yet. Actually, I am. And these scissors might not be... So I'm just going to weigh it down with my, my keychain thing here. And then I'm going to collect it with my fingers. And then I'm going to trim them as best I can. The sharper the scissors, the better. These are not super sharp. Okay, good. Pretty good for not really being able to see what I'm doing. And then you can keep like trimming and shaping with your scissors as, until you get the exact desired desirable shape that you like. Oh, we got another tip. Masking tape helps the cutting, um, cutting the fringe too. Very good tip. Thank you. Okay, and then there's our earring. So now let's add the hardware. So this is not hard. It may be called hardware, but it's not hard. Let's do a giveaway. Let's do a giveaway before we do the hardware. So I'm going to set this aside. And, oh yeah, the self-healing pads are really good. They have them at the Dollar Tree is what Stephanie is saying. Eat, Pray, and Crochet is telling us that, uh, yeah, I feel like a hairstylist too, Katie. I love it. It's like, okay, and then I, I kind of just want to do that. You know how they kind of go up and down? I don't know what that does, but I kind of want to do it to my earrings anyway. Go ahead and start your guesses. 111 has already been selected. Guess numbers 1 through 126. The person that we see that shows up in the comments that we see that gets the closest without going over is the winner. Um, we are doing the best we can. Instagram is far from perfect and doesn't always show us um, everything perfectly. So oh, I'll go ahead and let you get your guesses in while I take a drink of what this might be like, what, three, eight, three day old water. Do you guys remember what day I grabbed my my cup from when Ava was born? Because I, I'm still drinking it. Was that yesterday or day before? Is this day three? I think it's day three. It's still good, though, if that helps. Numbers 1 through 126. After, oh, let's see. This time we are going to give away the Crochet Miss sticker. So this is going to be what the prize is. One of the exclusive only 10 in the world Crochet Miss stickers. After I type in the word stop in the comments, no more entries will be submitted or taken into account when choosing the winner. I'm trying to make sure all my numbers are nice and separated from one another up in here. Maybe next year I will fold them in half because, or get a bingo thing. Okay, here we go. Gonna pull one. Not looking. Okay, let's see. Wait, 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 wait. 56. 56 is our winner. Oh, I forgot to type stop. S-T-O-P post. Okay. 56 is our winner. Sierra will find you. She will give you a shout out and she will let me know. And then I will give you a shout out. And you are winning the Crochet Miss sticker. 56. Excellent. Now let's add the hardware to our little earring. Okay. So we are going to take our finding and our needle nose pliers and I'm going to pull it open just like this pull it open and so it there's a little gap now so I can insert it into my the stitches up here so I just kind of eyeball it to find the center one but you can definitely count because it is an even number congratulations a l w a g z congratulations and then we're just going to insert that into the middle stitch, but I'm going to add a jump ring because I normally haven't, I've never done the jump, jump ring before and I might like it better. So I have an open jump ring here. I'm going to add it. Ooh, crochet miss merch. I was going to add the t-shirts this year, super stuff, and I just ran out of time, but I will definitely, um, put that on the crochet miss 2023 planning card sierra if we don't have one on our trello board and add that to the suggestions because i have my crochet miss shirt and i love it <laughs> so everybody should get to experience that joy okay so we're going to insert the jump ring into the middle single crochet stitch so there there was 25 so there's so many on this side and so many on this side this one is about in the middle i mean you could count them if you wanted to be precise but from what i can see that's pretty dang close now we're going to, well, you could have kept this one um, closed. Let's use this one because that one's still closed. Now I'm going to stick my earring finding, and I'm going to make sure that the it goes on like this with the back facing towards the back of my earring and slip it on like so. Okay, 
Just let it dangle there. And now we're gonna close our jump ring. I'm gonna kind of motion for it to close. You could use two pliers if you had two. You can have one in each hand and you'll have better control. I only have one, but I'm closing it up and then I can take like this flat part of my pliers and just kind of pinch it and pinch it closed as best you can. It would be helpful with two pairs of pliers. Pinch, okay, pinch. And now I'm just gonna turn it so that opening is under the stitch. So hopefully it gets swallowed up in the yarn in there and it won't come undone. But looky here. Then we have our finished earring. So that's what it looks like with the jump ring. If you wanted to, um, you know, choose what's best for you and your ideal customer and, and the way your style is, that's what it would look like. I don't know how I feel about it. I think it's good. I think I like it. I think we could use a smaller jump ring. These are, these are kind of big. I think a smaller jump ring would be really nice. Um, but this one looks nice too. You could do like a couple of them, almost like a chain and make them drop really low. That might look cool. I don't know because it already has the fringe on there. So it'd be trial and error. Okay, good, good squishes here. That's what we're going for. Sorry, I'm not able to read the comments while I'm squishing this. Okay, pretty, thank you. A zipper pull, love it. So many things. I also had the idea or somebody else did of making a garland out of these you could do like a christmas garland or a boho gar you could put like beads in between them there's literally so many things that you could do with these i am obsessed with them you could add a charm or a bead to down here at the bottom or even at the top with your like a little dangly bead on your jump ring to add some some pizzazz if that's true to your brand and your ideal customer like the options are endless and they are so dang cute um we are at 44 minutes so we're gonna make another one kind of quick because I'm going to make it a keychain. And I'm not going to use fingering weight yarn. I'm going to use worsted weight yarn. Just so you guys can see what it is. And I will make this second earring off camera. Let me grab some worsted weight yarn from my stash. I am looking at it. Okay. So this yarn is not, it's not necessary. It might be a four. Um, but if it is, it's a really thin four. This is from... Uh, we crochet. I made a bear, a lo bear lovey with it. I don't know if I want to use this or not. I guess I can. I don't want to use this because it's that purple and purple's Sierra's favorite color, not mine. So let me find another one. I'm looking at my stash, you guys. I'm looking over here at my yarn wall, trying to choose a worsted weight number four yarn that I could use for this. There's so many, but I can't, like nothing is standing out to me as like, that's the one. That's the one right there. But it will, just, just, the yarn will choose. The yarn will tell me which one to choose. Um, okay, we're gonna do this one. This is Mighty Stitch from We Crochet. I used these to make headbands for Ava's softball team. So this is, this is the one we're going with. Mighty Stitch, it is a number four weight yarn. Where is, there it is. So let's, actually I'm going to save this one for my other earring since it's already been measured and I'm going to grab my rope and do another one for this one. And this one is going to be for a keychain and it's going to be very, very quick, but um, you can slow, slow it down. If you're watching the replay on YouTube, you can control the playback speed yourself. Um, if you want to watch it slower, just change it to less than one. If you want to watch it faster, change it to more than one. Um, I have my G hook over here, so that's the one that I'm going to use, and we are going to single crochet around. It probably won't be 25 because this yarn is bigger, um, it, but it will still be an odd number. So we're going to go through all the steps again, this time a little bit faster. Make a slip knot first, and insert it onto our hook. Go on around, like under. This is how you start. I'm gonna stay, stay right there. This is, this is the starting position. And then we are going to make a single crochet. Still yarning over. That's one. And I'm gonna do this all the way down until I feel like we've got enough. Two, you honestly don't even need to count, but you want it to be an odd, actually it doesn't even have to be an odd number with the key ring. So you don't even, you really don't even have to count. You can just single crochet it until you get it to the size that you want. Now, if you want to make mo a lot of these and replic rep 
replicate them in your shop, you're going to maybe want to count. But honestly, nobody's going to know. And I love projects where I don't have to count. Those are really good. These are, I know there's a lot of supplies, but these, I made a whole bunch in, on, when I designed it, I think it was in, we were in Florida, like a long, long time ago. So I made a whole bunch of them on the way to and from Florida. And that's how I got so many. I'm pretty sure I made a whole bunch in the actual hotel too. So my tension's getting weird. See how my tension's looser down here and tighter up there. We're just going to keep going, but be mindful of your tension. Just do a couple more until it is about the right width for my my thinking on my brain. Okay, let's take a look-see. Give them a squish towards the center and then kind of adjust so it's nice and divided nicely. Okay, and then let's give it a give it a little humpty dump and see. Um that's probably enough. I'm gonna squish them together a little bit tighter so they go around the loop easier. And we'll see. Yeah, I'm gonna add another couple more stitches and then tie off. She sounds like a fun mom. Oh, tell my seven-year-old that. My seven-year-old had a meltdown yesterday because she did not want to taste the dinner Gabe made. An actual meltdown. It was very time-consuming. Okay. Now I'm going to tie off, but I'm going to try to keep it nice and tight so my um, ends don't get loosey-goosey. Not do as much as we did last time because that was way too much of a tail. Tie off like so. Okay, and this is what we got. Now we're going to squish them together so they are snug as a bug in a rug. And then we can join them and knot them up like we did previously. Look how cool that's gonna look. But I'm gonna try some different hardware. So the one that's in the email that I sent you the day, if I remember to link it, I probably didn't, was the ball chain. These are like pennies when you buy them in bulk. You can get a hundred of them for very, very cheap. And then you finish this loop, pretend it's this one, you stick the ball chain in the middle, bada bing, bada boom, Bob's your uncle. You have a festive keychain. like. So, so simple. But another thing, bye, Megan. Oh, got to get some. I thought you meant got to go get some. Love that color, girl. Me too. I'm all about the neon pink. Let's see some of these other um, key rings. So we could do this one that we did yesterday, and we could thread this on to our key ring, right? Like this, before we close up the bottom so it's already on there. And then we could attach it to this guy, like work it through and attach it to this guy. Let's get an idea of what it would look like. It would look kind of like this. Seems like a lot, seems really excessive. You could also go straight through the bottom of this guy. Um, fingering weight yarn might be better for something like this because these stitches are gonna be really thick because I used a G-hook and thicker yarn, but you could probably well, I, need, I probably need to tape this. Just thread it right on through. You could use some tape to hold them all together. Let me see if I can pull it through without messing up. I think we got it. Okay. And then see if you couldn't just scoot it right up over the stitches. It's really snug because the stitches are so, so thick. Yeah, that is really super snug. It's not going to move around much at all. So I don't recommend that either with um, this yarn. It would probably be better with this one. It would probably look really good. Um, let's try, I think we have, oh, get off of there. That one is not a good idea. Too tight. Now, I think, let's see, I have this one that's got a similar, but I think that would be too tight too. So, and then we have like these big honking silver ones, but that looks like a dog leash thing to me looks like that's all that I have in the moment well I have these little baby ones um, but I don't think that would be good for this so I think I'm just gonna do the ball chain one or no I'm gonna do this one I'm gonna do this one and see how it looks see how it looks when it's all done so I'm gonna just throw the key ring on there and then make sure my stitches are in the right spots Nice and squished. Okay. 
beautiful. Okay, and now I'm going to flip it over and tie and sew in my tails like we did. If you're just joining, this is our second one. I did the first one much slower. Um, so if you uh, definitely catch that replay if you wanna see it done much slower. There's also a full video tutorial for these as well on my YouTube channel if you would rather be in full control of the speed at which we go through it together. You can definitely do that over on YouTube. Okay, now pull it up, squeeze it together. Could you insert the little one in the middle of stitching or would it make a big gap? I think you could, and you could just squish them up next to, squish them up next to it. I think you could do that. You guys are welcome to definitely play around with it and find all kinds of different ways to make it work best for you and then share it in the community. You can share it in the Ash and Tay Crochet Facebook group. A lot of people there would know what you're talking about. Um, you can send it to me and I can share it. Like we can figure it out. So now I'm going to do my wrapping. And you just want to make sure that you can't see the tails sticking out. And I could be less intentional with this one's wrapping because it's all the same color. So this one I, I went for like a little ombre effect because of the yarn. But where this one's all the same color, nobody's, nobody's going to know. So you wrap them and then we're going to close it off over here. Sierra's coming in hot with the links for you guys. Okay. Pulley, pulley. Okay, double knot it. And then we can sew in our tails. And then this guy is, well, then do our fringe. And then it's done. Like, how fast is that for a free gift? Very simple. And it would make, or, I mean, obviously you could sell them too. It would be like a, a, a good inexpensive thing. Because sometimes, at your, if you go to physical markets, having inexpensive things by your cash register is a good idea. You know how Walmart does it where they and and Michaels and Hop and Target everybody puts those little quick grab inexpensive things by the counter. You can do that too with your crochet business. So things like this little last minute add-ons would be great. So that tail in. Okay. And then this one Um, let's go here, up here, give it a nice tug to kind of squish that tail up in there, and then back down, wiggling it to make sure it goes between all the little threads of your rope, okay, Ugh. pull it through, Oh, felt it do something weird when I did that. So that might be my tail. It might have um, split the stitch, basically, up under there. That might be just a tiny piece of one of these three parts of the yarn. But I'm not worried about it because, one, it's all the same color. And, two, it's the back. Um, it blends in fine. If it was an earring, I would probably be a little bit more intentional. But there you go. Voila. Now we have a cool little keychain, a cool little fringy keychain. We can add this guy on there. If you wanted to, you could put the actual key ring through the stitch, like we did with the with the earrings. You could put the key ring through the stitch, but I would choose a smaller key ring because this one's really gaudy. But I'm just gonna plop it on there. So it's like it's not my favorite, right? It's not my favorite because of the key ring is so massive. I really like the the ball chain ones. These are, these are probably my favorite, but it's fun to try different ones because you never know which one is you're going to land on and it just like changes everything for you. So we're going to kind of comb out our fringe a little bit and then trim it down to be the exact length that we want our fringe to be and then you can straighten it if you're into that. Okay, you could even make a necklace out of this, like, or try to make a bigger one. You could use really big rope if you wanted to. You can use tiny rope and the smallest yarn that you could find for a little dainty one. So many different ways to use these. These are so much fun. When the pattern first went out, everybody was like, make, everybody was making them. It was really fun. It was a really fun time. 
Okay, and now we're gonna trim them with my not sharp enough scissors, but I do need to weigh it down so I can pull from it. Give it some resistance. Okay, try to straighten it as best I can. Not bad. Give a little trimmy trimmy. Just a little touch up down here because a few of those hairs are sticking out weird. Okay, ta-da! Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I will make my second earring off camera and try to share it in my stories. But that is that. Super duper simple. I'm gonna turn around now and, and chat with you guys for a little bit. Hi, how's everybody doing? Santa or a gnome? Oh, if you figure that out, Sierra, please show me that. Not, not assistant Sierra, different Sierra. If you can make this a gnome, freaking show me because I will lose my mind. I mean, I guess you could like... Also, there's a rainbow version on my blog that's really similar to this, but you use three strands of rope. You make little rainbow earrings. Let's do this one. Oh, look how fun that is. I kind of, I like the jump ring because it gives it more of a, it's a different dangle. It's a different dangle with the jump ring. I'm addicted. <laughs> they are so fun. They really are. And you can get different fringe colors. You can get like pink or teal or gray or black. I think they have like mustard and terracotta now at Hobby Lobby. They came out with new colors fairly recently. Terracotta would be gorgeous. Now I'm going to go to Hobby Lobby and buy some terracotta things. Yes, a wooden bead would be gorgeous. Um, you could even add wooden beads to like the top of your keychain. So you could like wooden beads and then the key finding. That would be gorgeous. Almost like a tassel. I mean, you could put these. What else could you do? Could you put them around a blanket? Like the trim of a blanket and make it like a really boho tassel trim. Just attaching them one at a time. All like every 10 stitches or something. That could be really cool. Need a small nose bead glued right at the part where it comes down. Yes, we would do that. So does this kind of imply his hat and then his nose and then his beard? And then that would make a whole, that would make a whole gnome looking thing because I will lose my mind. I've never made a gnome thing, but I like them a lot. And I buy gnome things, even though I've never made a gnome thing. I need to put my other earring back in because I've got two different ones. Oh, okay, friends, that is a wrap for Crochet Miss Day 9. We're going to do one more giveaway here in a minute, which brings us to just three again, but that's just the timing. Sometimes that's just how the cookie crumbles, right? Um, if you have any questions, feel free to send them to me. Um, people are saying they would love to see the gnome. So if you make the gnome, use hashtag Crochet Miss. Should we do hashtag Crochet Miss? Yeah, use hashtag Crochet Miss. C H R O. C H R C R O Crow C H E T M A S Hashtag Crochet Miss and then we can see each other's makes. That would be really fun. If you're not following hashtag crochet miss, you can follow a hashtag on Instagram. So we don't have to follow each other unless we just want to, but we can follow hashtag crochet miss and we can see what everybody's posting or has been posting. And if you've posted stuff up until this point, I should have said this on day one, um, you can add it into the comments of those posts so we can all kind of see each other's crochet miss makes. I literally didn't think of that until just now. I will make sure that is a priority in 2023 crochet miss is adding the hashtag. And next year, the hashtag might be crochetmas23, but this year we're just gonna do crochetmas. Just crochetmas, hashtag crochetmas, keeping it simple, and you guys can share all of your makes with each other there. You can talk about the yarn that you used, the hook size that you used, all the different things. I've been trying to think about how I can do more lives on Instagram because I'm having a good time and you're having a good time and we just need to make lives more of a thing. And I don't think I can commit to weekly at the moment, but I think I could do monthly. And I'm thinking yarn experiment lives where each month I do one of my patterns and I try a different yarn and see how it turns out. I think that would be really fun. You can let me know in the comments if you think that would be a fun thing to do. White, I just think white rope, a colored hat, a cute little wooden bead for the nose, and bam, a gnome. I love it so much. You guys are so creative. And gnome stuff sells like hotcakes. Like it really, really does. I wonder if you could, oh my gosh, hold the phone. If that looks good, what if you made... I think my dog is trying to bark at me because of my excitement. <laughs> he thinks that I'm talking to him. I'm not talking to you. Relax. Relax. Uh-uh. 
No. No, sir. You're going to get in your room. He's getting excited with me is what he's doing. Um, what if you made a big one and it was a doorknob decor? You know, like you could, where the doorknob would go through this, this little boop, put on the doorknob, make it look like a giant gnome, like a Christmas gnome doorknob decor or a Christmas gnome. What if you made a giant one and it was like a wreath, like a giant, like a wreath situation. And you could put like fancy little, um, like, holly or christmas tree branches or something around this like or like a big ribbon or something like a really big reef situation because you can buy dang big rope and we could or and we could even double it up if you don't have dang big rope you can take a whole bunch of little rope and double it all up make it really thick and then crochet around it y'all that would be so cute i'm probably gonna have to do that today Right? And then I'm going to have to write up the blog post and make the YouTube video and use all the keywords that say crochet uh, fringe wreath. I need to make a giant one. I mean, it might look horrible, but it might look awesome. And if the gnomes look awesome, a big gnome wreath would look awesome too. So we could do a doorknob hanger, a gnome wreath, or a big, just a big old boho wreath. So many, so many things that you could do with this. Like the options are endless. So we're going to have so much fun today for the rest of the day. Uh, just kind of experimenting and sharing pictures on Instagram and using the hashtag crochet miss so we can all tune in together. We can all join in together in all of the fun. Red palm gnomes and crocheted antlers with like brown. You could do like brown yarn and then add the nose and the antlers. Girl, little eyeballs. Endless, endless possibilities. That would be a fun doorknob hanger, I think, like a reindeer doorknob hanger. Going shopping today. <laughs> Everybody, we'll, we'll all meet at Hobby Lobby. Go buy all the things. Oh my gosh, so much fun. Yay. Um, let's talk about tomorrow. Tomorrow is the last day of Crochet Miss. We are making nesting baskets. We are going to make a mini version. Um, so I'm going to use Burnett Home Decor. I'm going to show it to you. Maybe, yes. <clears throat> I'm gonna drink my three day old water. I'm gonna be using Burnett Home Decor. I'm gonna be making it up as I go on camera, so I have nothing to compare it to. And we're just gonna hope for the best. And if it turns out horrible, then it turns out horrible, but I don't think it will. Worst case is we'll need to get some um, plastic canvas to re re-firm the insides, right? But this is what I'm going to be using. I'll probably use like an H hook. I want it to be tight so it's nice and strong. Probably an H or an I. Um, I'm, the email that I'll send out in the morning is for the original pattern with the original materials list. I'm going to show you what the size looks like. This is this small size nesting basket. And it goes into the medium and the medium goes into the big one. So this is the big one. My medium one is over there. But you can get an idea about what the medium one looks like. How pretty is this yarn on camera? This is the Hobie yarn. I can't remember the name of it. Bungee, maybe, I think. But how pretty is this on camera? It just, it looks so gorgeous. I remember thinking that when I did the yarn review back in the day. But I can show you what it looks like. Ugh. Oh, and here's another one that you could probably use. So this is what the yarn looks like. Um, I will die. I need the freaking... Need the tag so you can actually see, okay? So this is my favorite yarn for making nesting baskets, hands down. Um, I don't know about blanket yarn, Crafty K. It might be really like not strong, but you could reinforce it with plastic um, grid stuff. So somebody should try. Somebody should absolutely try because we don't know until we try. But this yarn is my favorite for making baskets. This is from Hobie and it's called Bungie, and there's a an affiliate link in my Hobie yarn review video that I did a couple months ago back in the old office. This is another one that is, it's like tube yarn, kind of. Yeah, it's tube yarn. But this one, if you follow a designer named Christina that lives in Kentucky, she uses this yarn for her trivets pattern. I think you could use this to make a nesting basket, and you could probably get the smallest size. I can get the smallest size with one skein of this Hobie. It's good to have two, just in case your tension gets weird, but I can get one. I mean, worst case, the inside of your basket would, let me show you how these are made. Since we have time, since this one was so short. Look at this. I got that from Cracker Barrel. 
And the cute is a tape measure. It's gonna be a photo prop in the summertime. Okay, go with post-it notes. So this basket is made like this. So you make the circle and then you go on the back loop and then you do the knit stitch and then you go on the back loop and then you single crochet for the rest of the time. And then, um, it's okay, Mama Sita, thank you. But um, I actually restarted it already from where I dropped it at the beginning. Um, but so, and then we just fold this down in there to make the inner wall and then you can sew it down. Um, but if you run out of yarn and say you're two rows short, you can still plop it down in there, right? It would still be fine. It just wouldn't be. So you could probably get away with one skein and, but just try to be mindful of your tension and try to keep it as tight as you can. Um, but these little baskets are like, this yarn is so sturdy, like really, really sturdy for holding your knickknacks. I love these baskets. I love marketing baskets for different seasons and for different people. Baskets is always my go-to example when I'm talking about how to market the same thing for different seasons to different people. Um, so this is gonna be a really fun pattern, but I'm using this one, probably an H hook. I'm gonna make probably this whole size. I'll just follow the pattern for the small size and it will be smaller than this because the yarn is significantly smaller, but I'm hoping I can make it taller. So it's gonna look more like this in size. So it'll be like a good little pin, like a little pin basket. Um, okay. So that's tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, because it's a Saturday. So we're knocking it out early. 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to make baskets. All you need is your yarn and your hook and your tapestry needle. No, no extra fun things for tomorrow's pattern. Okay, let's do a giveaway. Let's do resting stitch face. And then we will call it a day. So the giveaway rules again are one guest per person. Guess the numbers one through 126. 111 and 56 have already been selected. So don't guess those or you will lose. Um, I will type stop. After I type stop, no more guesses can be submitted. Uh, please give grace. Instagram lags and glitches. And we can only go off of what we see at a time. We try to keep it fair and fun for all. Sometimes Instagram just straight up will not show us your comment. It just won't. And I wish there was something we could do to make it better. I wish there was some sort of like plug-in or extension that I could add to do like a giveaway extension. And it would it would give me, how cool would it be if it gave me like a, autumn, a random number generator and it was built in. Kind of like the questions box is built in. That would be really nice. Um, but it's not an option. So we just got to do go with what we have. Um, if you win, I need your name, your Instagram handle, what prize you won specifically, and where I need to send it to. So I need you to email that to Ashley at A Crafty Concept, not an Instagram DM, or it will get lost, and you'll never get your prize. And email Ashley at A Crafty Concept with your name, your Instagram handle, what prize you won specifically. So you would say the resting stitch face sticker is the one that I won, and your shipping address so I can send it to you. Let's grab my basket. Get all my fun yarn out of the way. Again, this is the large size of the nesting basket, which is a free pattern already on my blog and YouTube channel and all the things. And we will be making a mini version of the small size tomorrow in our live for the sake of time. Also for the sake of an experiment because I want to see it done. Okay, not looking, grabbing one that doesn't feel like it's like folded. Okay, 73. Oh, I forgot to say stop. Dag, S-T-O-P. Send. Okay, 73 is the winner. Sierra will find you. She will tag you. She will let both of us know who won, and you will win the resting stitch face sticker. That is all that I have for you guys today. That is, I think, our fastest crochet miss live to date. Um, Day six is live on YouTube. Day seven will be live on YouTube sometime today. And my new, good job, Kay Tizzle. Also a really cool name. And my new video that I have that's going live today that is separate from Crochet Miss will be going live at about 2 o'clock. That's going to be our goal. I think it should work because everything is already set for the most part. There's just a few finishing details that we need to do before it's ready to go live for you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and for being here. I'm so glad that you are having just as much fun as I am at doing this Crochet Miss. Spending all this time with you guys every day has been such a joy for me. I have enjoyed it immensely. Like, I don't think... I love Kay Tizzle. That was amazing. I don't think I've had this much fun. I'm like, I, this is work. I'm working right now. And I'm having the time of my life. Like, 
it couldn't get any better than this. And I love you for being here because if you weren't here, I would be talking to myself or Sierra and I would just be chatting it up in the comments and that would be way less fun. So thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for sharing about it and inviting your friends and making this this big virtual party. The more people, the more fun. It's just been really, really fun and I couldn't do it without you. So thank you, thank you so, so much. Tomorrow's our last day. We have one day left. Also, I'm gonna send a recap email on the 11th. So keep an eye out for that. Um, I'm going to pose for my little picture for the replay. Going to stay still for a long, long time. So it'll grab it. My last one, my eyes were closed, you guys. Like, what are the chances? I don't know how many frames per second it does, but it's really not a lot. Okay, hopefully that gets one. If not, whatever. I'll just do the starting image that we had at the beginning. Okay, I will see you guys tomorrow a little bit earlier, one hour earlier than today. So it's 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, whatever time that is for your time zone. I love you. Go have some lunch. That's what I'm going to do. Have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow.